Hello, Double Eagle. Have you been staying warm? I've been thinking a lot about blankets lately, and how do they help you stay warm? I'm also thinking about ice chests. How do they keep things cold? Well, blankets and ice chests are both human inventions that try and maintain a certain temperature. With blankets, we're trying to maintain our heat, and ice chests are trying to maintain the cold. Either way, they're called insulators. Blankets, coats, socks, gloves, and hats all feel warm when you put them on, but they don't actually create any heat unless you have an electric blanket or electric hat or socks or something. What they do is hold in the heat that your body makes. Since we're warm-blooded, we can make our own heat by eating food. Cold-blooded animals have to warm up in the sun to get warm. Other mammals and birds have layers of thick fur or feathers to keep warm, but we have to make our own clothes and blankets to do that job. Warm clothes and blankets work by trapping heat and holding air close to your body. When blankets are fuzzy, the fuzz makes lots of little places for air to stay, and it doesn't want to move because the fuzz kind of holds it in place so it can stay warm. Blankets are also filled with a fluffy material that can hold in the heat by trapping it inside all the little pockets. Wind does the opposite. It blows all the warm air away, so windy days can feel even colder than days with no wind. This is also why blowing on your food can help it cool off faster. Good insulators will also have a way to seal the heat in and protect it from being blown away by wind. That's why your jacket works a lot better when you zip it up, and why tucking in your shirt can help you stay warmer too. If you'd like to try that experiment for yourself, Try going outside both ways and see which way keeps you warmer. Now, we've talked a lot about keeping things warm. What about keeping things cold? Keeping things cold is the same idea. We want to trap all the cold air in little pockets or compartments and seal it away so that the warm air can't get to it. That's why it's so important to seal ice chests and refrigerators and freezers when you're not using them. Now, we could talk about hot and cold and insulators all day long, but I think you'll learn better if you do an experiment for yourself. So for today's STEM activity, I want you to invent an insulator that will keep an ice cube cold and frozen for as long as possible. You can use things you already have around your house to build kind of like a little house for your ice cube. If you can, try out a few variations and see which one works best. As you're designing your insulator ice cube house, keep in mind the two ways that we keep heat or cold in. We can seal it in, or we can make little pockets to hold in the air around it. So you might try trapping air around your ice cube with lots of layers, maybe fuzzy layers, or you might try sealing it in so the air can't escape. I'm going to try a few different materials to see what works best. I want to keep everything the same and only change the material, so I'm going to use a strip of plastic wrap, a strip of paper that's the same size, and a strip of fabric that's also the same size. You use whatever materials you have at your house to make your insulator. We also need something to compare it to that has no insulation. That's going to be our control. So when you do your experiment, make sure you have a plain ice cube with no insulator that you can compare it to. And hopefully our insulators will work better than nothing and keep the ice cube from melting longer. Now, since we know these ice cubes are going to melt, we should put them on something that we don't mind if it gets wet. I'm gonna put mine on little plates. You could also use bowls or a cookie sheet or put them in the bathtub, uh, whatever works at your house. After that, set a timer for about an hour, and then after an hour, go check on your ice cubes and see which one is the biggest, which one's the smallest. The one with the largest ice cube that's the most frozen will be the best insulator. I'm gonna set up my camera to take a picture every minute uh, so that we can watch them slowly melt. When you're done, take a picture of your insulator and write or tell about your results and share it with your class. I hope you stay safe, have fun, and stay warm.